You're watching Telecom TV from the SDN NFV World Congress in The Hague. And I'm joined now by Timo Yokiaho of Red Hat and Brian Madden of Intel. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you. Um, Brian, if I can start, um, earlier this year Intel made an announcement um, uh, surrounding its select solutions. Mm -hmm. um, can you just give us a little bit more detail and information about what Intel Select Solutions is? Sure, um, in, in July we, we announced, uh, actually we made, we made two announcements. We announced our next generation uh, Intel Xeon Scalable Processors uh, along with our program we call Intel Select Solutions. And we brought this program to market for, for two particular reasons. Number one, we wanted to um, offer the industry a, a reference architecture and solution that we believe is verified by Intel and optimized um, internally. Um, uh, and it's, it's a way of helping to speed deployment uh, of our next generation processors. And this week at the SDN NFE World Congress, um, Intel made an announcement to, to, to further the aims of, of, of the initiative, I believe. True, yeah, we, we, we announced um, a collaboration with, with Red Hat, um, with us here today, um, where we're bringing out a derivative of our NFE uh, NFE infrastructure solution uh, based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.3. Which brings me to, to Timo. Um, tell me more about um, what you're doing with Intel with Select Solutions. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have been collaborating with Intel, I don't know, 15, 20 years in, in many, many different domains. And this is uh, yet another kind of proof point that uh, we are a kind of very important partners to each other. And in this um, Intel Select Solution, uh, we will bring in uh, Red Hat's uh, uh, Enterprise Linux distribution as a host OS. Uh, to be used in NF NFE solutions uh, to provide uh, high performance networking and high performance uh, virtual machines and all that stuff. So Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux RHEL is a host OS in this um, Intel Select solution, mm -hmm. one of the host OSs, and uh, we really focus on performance, high quality, all these things together with Intel. And Brian, what do you see as the, uh, the what does Intel bring to communication service providers looking at NFE infrastructure? How does Intel Select Solutions help them with NFEI? It's a really good question, and, and we, we went out and we spoke to operators and, and comm service providers who, who have a number, number of fundamental um, challenges, business challenges. Number one, they need to, first of all, understand what they need to specify, right, at, at this layer. Um, and having a branded uh, solution from Intel, or at least a branded uh, program from Intel, gives them the ability to, to understand and to trust uh, the brand, that it, the Intel Select brand itself. But also as well, um, the second, and another part of why this is, is important for the industry is that it's just the ecosystem around the operators as well. So the ISVs, the software vendors, and, and uh, the hardware vendors who can take this solution um, and build upon this solution, but also as well optimize their solutions on top of that. So it really helping time to market and helping operators deploy a lot quicker. And are we finding in industry that there's still a lot of um, evaluation and, uh, and knowledge building that is needed to, to roll out NFEI? So the whole NFE movement has been now on about five years. Mm -hmm. It's five years already. And uh, the industry still needs a lot of education. We still need some uh, proof of concepts, you know, less and less, because uh, this year we have seen a lot of live deployments uh, going on as we speak, which is good. But still, there is a lot of things to do to make, uh, you know, all, to get all the benefits what NFE uh, is kind of promising, and uh, it needs um, a lot more convergence on hardware level, and this Intel solution, Select solution, is one of the good exercises towards that. The other part where the, the uh, convergence is needed is on the VNF level. So Red Hat is not a VNF vendor, but uh, we are hosting VNFs from anybody. We call ourselves as a Switzerland of NFE. We are mm. uh, hosting anybody's, uh, any, or onboarding anybody's VNFs, but the VNFs are developed in a very, very different ways. And uh, it's, uh, there needs to be some kind of a convergence within the VNF uh, industry, and then eventually going towards cloud native VNFs, which is yet another journey. So Brian, this, this collaboration comes off the back of um, quite an established linkage between yourself and, and Red Hat. Yeah, Red Hat and Intel are, are, you know, have, have been synonymously working with each other for, for well over 15 years. Um, 
both contribute towards open source. Um, we're big advocates of open standards and open source. Um, we collaborate across many areas, from enterprise all the way through the networking within the data center realm. And you know, it's it's exciting working with Red Hat, being the innovative company that they are, and and the solutions that we're bringing to market with this Intel Select solution for NFVI. You know, gives that industry a kickstart with 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 some reliable partners that we're bringing on board in OEMs, and also you know working with Red Hat that are going to deliver that 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 host OS capability that we need within it, and that their customers are demanding as well. Timo, are there other areas in particular where the two companies are collaborating at the moment? Well, there are so many different areas, but uh, but you know, collaborating in open source communities, that's one, DBDK, KVM hypervisor, we work a lot with many companies and Intel is one of the key players in those. Uh, but in addition to that, again, heavily related to NFE is that we, we work uh, very closely with Intel at Etsy NFE ISG, of course with other companies, yeah. but that's one particular thing we have been working with Intel for the last uh, four years. Uh, as well as OPNFE, the open platform for NFE, we are collaborating in many, many projects within OPNFE with Intel. We are both kind of a neutral technology vendor, so it's really easy to work uh, together with Intel. Yeah, and, and then just, just, just to build on that as well, I think at an event like, like this today, the, it's amazing to see the amount of collaboration, and it's not just a one-on-one -on -one collaboration between yeah. Intel and Red Hat. We collaborate with Red Hat with the community, and, and I think that's where the value really, really starts to grow. Um, and you mentioned earlier on about, you know, where are we on this path? I think that these sort of collaborations are the, are, are really a fundamental linkage, and bringing those um, operators and and the software vendors and the operating system vendors and, and ourselves together is helping to 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 move that along. Because when we talk about these evolution paths and transformation paths coming up in the lift really fast is, is 5G. Um, and so much of what we do seems to have this, this, this focus and focal point there of, of, of 5G. Yeah, and, and 5G, 5G readiness is a term that's, that's often used at the moment. And uh, we, um, from an Intel perspective, we have a, a 5G strategy which is end-to-end, -end, uh, which covers the network, cloud, and client. Because we really, really believe that the investments that the industry is making today um, and, and at the moment are on network transformation is the fundamental bedrock for 5G readiness. You know, use cases like multi-access edge compute, for instance, mm -hmm. is a way for operators and the community to come together and, and to look at services that are 5G capable and 5G ready, but install them today and perhaps even monetize as well. And is Red Hat also drawn into the 5G ready operating sphere? Well, we are definitely drawn and we want to be mm -hmm. drawn. We really mm -hmm. like that and our, our approach to 5G, again, we are a software platform vendor. We have kind of a three-step uh, approach uh, to 5G. First is uh, Cloud RAN, which is uh, cloudifying the radio access network, which is one challenging topic. Once the industry have a consensus, consensus what is the split mode between the base station and, and baseband processing on the cloud. So, mm. uh, very challenging, real-time features, low latency packet delivery. Multi-access edge computing is uh, kind of uh, going mm. with that. The same thing, low latency packet delivery, and then eventually uh, towards 5G. And uh, what we do at Red Hat, together with open source communities, is to proactively develop these things in OpenStack platform and in RHEL and other places to make sure that that technology is ready when 5G really hits the market. Very important. And Brian, can I talk about one of Intel's specific solutions and approaches to market, the, the Xeon scalable processing um, solutions. Um, what's your experience been with that so far? So, um, it, it's, it's a fantastic question because Intel scalable processors are, are Intel Xeon processors. They're our data center processors. They're used in enterprise, they're used in cloud. And we're bringing that capability, the cloud and enterprise capability to, to, to the comm service provider um, industry. And, and we're doing that because we really believe the scalability that this family gives is very important. But also as well, by using common tune chains, chains and uh, it helps operators use the processor and use it across multiple different use cases, be it on their IT side of their house or on the network side. So these Xeon scalable processors are perfectly suitable for NFVI deployments as well? Absolutely. Um, uh, in fact, when we announced our, uh, our Intel Select Solutions in July uh, and, and the announcement we made today with Red Hat, these are based on our Intel scalable processors and, and very, very important that those processors are used and to help that commonality across multiple different workloads. Brilliant. Well, Brian, Timo, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you very much.